So now we have lots of really good building blocks. We haven't yet put them together because we don't fully know how they fit together, but we have lots of cool things. We have controllability that tells us whether or not it's possible to control the system if we have access to the state. And the way we do that is using state feedback. We have this notion of observability, which tells us whether or not it is possible to figure out the state from the output. And the way we do that is uh, by building observers. And we have this tool that seems remarkably strong, which is pole placement, which basically allows us to place the closed loop eigenvalues wherever we want. So make them equal to the desired eigenvalues. And the big question now is, how do we put everything together? And the answer is known as the separation principle. And in a nutshell, the separation principle, which, by the way, is quite wonderful, uh, tells us that we can actually decouple observer design and control design from each other, meaning we can actually control the system as if we have x, even though we don't. And then we can get our estimate from x using an observer structure. So this is the topic of today's lecture, and it really is the reason why we're able to effectively control linear systems. So here's the game plan. Now I have x dot is ax plus bu, y is cx. So this is a standard linear time invariant system. Now I'm going to assume that this system is both completely controllable and completely observable. If it's not, then to be completely frank, we're toast. What that means, we need to go and buy new sensors, which is fancy speak for saying get a new C matrix. Or we need to buy more actuators, which means get a better B matrix. So let's assume that we have complete controllability and complete observability. Well, the first step in our game plan is let's ignore the fact that we don't have X. So I'm going to design the state feedback controller as if I had X, meaning I'm going to pick U is minus KX, which means that I get my closed, loop error, my closed loop dynamics to be this. Now, this is what I designed for, and I have my favorite pole placement tool to do this. Now, in reality, I don't have that. In reality, is I have U is minus KX hat, where the hat is my uh, estimated state. So that's what I actually have, even though that's not what I designed for. Now, step two, of course, is I'm going to estimate x using, using an observer in order to get this x hat and to make it be as pleasant as it can. The big thing that we should note now is that previously we didn't have a u term in the uh, observer dynamics. Now we do have a u term that we need to take into account, but it turns out that it's very simple to do that. I build my predictor, and the predictor part now contains both AX hat and a BU term because the predictor is just a copy of the dynamics. And then I have my corrector part, which is this error between the actual output and what the output would have been if I had X hat instead of X. Well, this structure again gives me the same error dynamics here. So what I do is I pick L so that my error, my estimation error, is stabilized. And as before, the error is the actual state minus my estimated state. So this is my game plan. Now, let's see if this game plan is any good. In fact, it should be good, right? Because otherwise I'm wasting everyone's time with these slides. But let's make sure that it indeed is worthwhile. What do we want this system to do? We want to drive x to 0 because we're stabilizing it. And we want to drive e to 0 because we want the estimate to be good. So what I need to do is analyze the joint dynamics together. So x dot is ax plus bu, but u is, if you remember, u is minus k, not x, but x hat, which is why I get my x dynamics to look like this. Well, my e dynamics, the estimation error dynamics, is what it has always been. OK, let's simplify this a little bit. So I know that the error is x minus x hat, so I can replace this x hat with um, x minus the error. Right? So then I get my dynamics after some push-ups to be a minus bkx plus bke. So now I have something that involves x and e, and here it only involves e. So now I can actually write everything in a joint way. x dot e dot is this large matrix now that's not an n by n, but it's a 2n by 2n times x and e. And now 
our strategy, our joint strategy, works if and only if this new joint system is an asymptotically stable system, which means that we need to check the eigenvalues of this new system matrix. Now, here is where the separation principle comes into play. This is my dynamics. Now, this matrix here is a rather special matrix because it's triangular. It has a block there, it has a block there, and it has a block there. And triangular matrices, or triangular bo block triangular matrices, may they be upper or lower triangular, triangular, they have a particularly nice structure. So this is an upper triangular block matrix. And the eigenvalues are given by the diagonal blocks, which means that the eigenvalues to this whole matrix are the eigenvalues to this matrix and the eigenvalues to this matrix. Or another way of writing it is that the characteristic equation is the characteristic equation to the first block here times the characteristic equation to the second block here. All that this means is that the eigenvalues are given by the eigenvalues of the diagonal blocks. And here is the wonderful part. If we haven't been stupid in how we did the design, then this thing has been stabilized because we did pole placement to make sure that the real part of all the eigenvalues is strictly negative. This part we've made sure is also well behaved because we've designed our observer in such a way that the real part of the eigenvalues are strictly negative. Which means that if we haven't messed anything up, everything works. What that means is the control design people, we can design our controllers as if we had the state. And then we rely on our clever sensing people to estimate the state for us. And thanks to the separation principle, everything works. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that we still have this term here. And this term, that basically tells you something about what happens to transients. But after a while, this term doesn't really matter and everything works. So now we're ready to state the separation principle. The separation principle tells us that we can, in fact, design controllers as if we have x. And then we can design the observers independent of the control actions because all we're doing is we're adding a plus bu in the observer dynamics. So the control actions are actually just canceled out. In other words, control and observer designs can be completely separated. So if we put everything together in a final glorious block diagram, this is what the world looks like. We have our system. This is physics. This is what a system does. Now, we have modeled it using A, B, and C matrices, but what comes out of this thing is Y, meaning our measurements, and what we push into this system is U, our control actions. Now, we're taking U, sorry, we're taking Y and feeding it into the observer. So the observer now is A, X hat, plus B, U, plus L, Y, minus C, X hat. And the one thing to note is that we need both Y and U to feed into the observer. Now, out of the observer comes X hat, meaning our estimate of what the system is actually doing. And now we use X hat to feed back to get our, our U. And the beautiful thing here is that these two blocks together, they constitute the controller. So these two blocks are what's being done in software. And this is the physics of the world. Right, so this is the plant. There's nothing we can do about that. And the controller consists now of two pieces. One piece that uh, estimates the state and another piece that computes the control action. So now we have everything we need to do effective control design. And what we will do in the next lecture, which is the final lecture, lecture of this module, is that we will actually deploy it. And in fact, we're going to see it in action on a humanoid robot where we're doing simultaneous control and state estimation.